The voice of women. The voice of women. Ninety one point seven. On the big question this morning, please, uh, we're going to be having a conversation around sexual harassment in high places. And uh, the founder, Sea Hope Women and Children's Rights Activist, Betty Abba, is going to be joining me in this conversation. Um, if we look at the trend of when we talk about sexual harassment in high places, one of the basic conversations that comes around this is the fact that um, the, the perpetrators always find a way to silence uh, the victim or the survivor uh, against speaking out or try to you know, uh, paint the survivor as the bad person in this particular situation. And this has been the trend, more importantly for us in our country, where uh, when you have money and you are in a very important position, you can do the undoable. And that has been going on for a long time. Uh, but there is a current case which is um, being spoken about, which uh, an allegation uh, which uh, Joy and I made against um, Senator Godzilla Pabio. Uh, and this uh, has sparked a lot of conversations and why we are taking up this particular conversation again on sexual harassment in high places. And Betty Abba is on the telephone with me this morning. Hello, good morning, Betty. Hello, good morning. Uh, good, uh, thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you so much. Yes, when, when we look at the current situation of um, the issues around sexual harassment and gender-based violence, um, with how things have been playing out in the last six months of 2020 only, not even going back as far, let's not, let's not even back date, but this year alone, since this pandemic started, there has been an increase in gender-based violence, more report of sexual-based violence, and I think so far about 3,600 cases where collectors have been reported on gender-based violence, rape, sexual assault, and all within the first six months of the year. Do you think uh, we are making progress? I think, uh, thank you so much again for having me on the program. I would say that um, the progress we are making, uh, so to say, is the fact that more and more people are reporting uh, more than ever before. You okay. have the social media, uh, you have um, a lot of awareness uh, programs going on, so people know that um, they shouldn't keep this under still lips. They are opening up to their neighbors, to their friends, okay. um, they are opening up to the authorities. And so uh, that is the uh, kind of, um, that is what I would term as an improvement. But the fact that um, the reality is that it, gets, hmm. it, it will actually reach an epidemic proportion. Okay. Uh, and it was really exacerbated by the fact of the lockdown because many people were on lockdown with their hmm. abusers. Yeah. Usually people go to school, to work, uh, to other places, children, to playground, to um, avoid this kind of harassment to avoid most multifaceted um, abuses. But now everyone has been more on a lockdown, especially okay. the real critical lockdown period. So mm. there was really no escape. And that's why we had the sexual and gender-based violence, okay. like um, uh, fighting all over the country and actually all over the world. But mm. the case of Nigeria is really pathetic because when you talk about um, three... Uh, Nigeria having reported cases of 3,600. Yeah. You can actually be sure that it may be up to 3 million. Somebody really? said about for every yeah. one case being reported, we have five under unreported cases. But not, I, I think I'm even I'm thinking you're not just five, I'm not just five, like mm. uh, one uh, one million cases mm. because of our culture of silence, because of the stigma around. Um, rape victims, rape survivors, okay. and all of that, most people don't even report. Mm -hmm. And even as an individual, if you're abused and you want to report, uh, your family may object to it because they don't want you to bring shame to the family. We are in a society where there's a lot of victim blaming. Okay. I've had a friend who was raped about 10, 15 years ago, and then the radio station put her name on air and put her house address on air. They kept covering the court case and then kept referring to her and they were mm. giving her house address, I mean her house number. Okay. And as we speak, she still lives under that stigma, not the man who actually abused her. Mm. It was actually a miracle that she actually got married. Mm. So we live in a society where there's a lot of um, stigma, a lot of victim blaming. And so okay. most people don't even uh, come up to report. So the cases that we, you've seen reported are people that break the odds. Maybe okay. it happened to people who are enlightened, who have some kind of links to activists and social media influencers, okay. uh, influencers and all of that. 
So it's even worse than we actually uh, think of. Yeah, uh, when we look at the, case, the issue of under-reported, uh, under-reportage of cases, uh, one of the places that have been, um, you know, a lot of analysts have have been out that a lot of cases are under-reported is when it comes to places of influence and power or high mm-hmm. places. It, it has been said that th- that those. That sector is where we have a large, in the formal sector, we have largely underreported cases coming in from, you know, people in high places because of the current position or the position or the power that such people uh, people possess. Um, how do we begin to break this down in order to uh, begin to create a safer environment? I think I should even ask you, how has women themselves um, been been able to allow this to thrive in terms of covering up in cases like this because of uh, the, the stigma that surrounds it? I, I think uh, to um, address your first point about um, the power play, mm. there's a lot of inequality in our country. Okay. And if you look at the cases, the trends of uh, the, the abuse, whether it's how they being sexually or physically abused, um, people abusing their uh, juniors in the office and all of that, most time it's about power play. The people who perpetrate this things believe that they can always get away with it. And it's because our institutions are weak. If we have institutions like we have in the U.S., in the U.K., for instance, where everyone lives in perpetual awe of the law enforcement agent, because you know that they are not going to take mm. the from you, yeah. you know that they won't look at your face, no matter how rich you are, no matter how popular and all of that, you've heard of our cases, prominent uh, celebrities yeah. uh, coming down in the U.S., as a result of um, um, allegations of uh, sexual abuse and all of that. Mm. And so the problem is we have a very strong, we have the inequality here is so strong. Mm. And people most times, they they don't even talk. They don't even speak up to say I've been abused because they know that this is a very big ogre and he can always bribe his way and, and nobody will even believe me in the first place. Okay. I've, I've had several uh, rape cases, and I'm always ashamed to say that like, about one, one tenth, maybe it's just about one tenth of our rape cases that we see actually making any headway. Hmm. Because in between the families consulting and the police intervening, everything filters into thin air. We've hmm. had a, uh, about over a year ago, we had the case of a, a young girl who was raped here in um, around in Lagos. And we took up the case to uh, a police station. Okay. And the person who was supposed to be a lawyer, hmm. who, was, who actually drew my attention to this case, okay. went behind, called the father of the, the parents of the girl okay. and the parents of the boy. Why that boy was still in detention at the police station? Okay. And this was supposed to be a lawyer. He called them and, 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 and before we knew what was happening, the parents of the, 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 the victim, the girl, stopped talking to me. Because the parents of the boy were very rich people. In fact, he took her to his house and stripped her naked and tried and raped her. Hmm. After bringing her back from a party, this was a, a very young teenager, a very beautiful young girl. And, and the, so compared to the parents of the girl, this, hmm. uh, this, uh, the father was just maybe a laborer and the, father, the mother worked in the factory or so. She was just in one of these uh, agencies. She had just lost her job. And so I believe strongly that money changed hands. And I mm. said, look, it's this. And the lawyer actually told me, you are trying, you are, you are in San Lucuso or something like that. If this case goes to court, the next five, ten years is in court. So he would just say, and, and I'm sure that was the same red shirt that he told them, okay. that look, in the next ten years, this case is in court, your daughter would have been shamed, everybody mm. will know about her, and you may even lose at the end of the day. Why don't you take this money? And okay. as we speak, the parents stopped talking to me. All right. Uh, okay. There was another, another case, and okay. the grandmother of the girl looked me in the eye and said, Why are you intervening? We don't want any case. We've forgiven her, her rapist. This mm. was the young girl who was raped. I said, Is she your granddaughter? This is my granddaughter we're talking about. How okay. on earth is that your business? Mm. And that was the end of that case. So, until people are really sensitized okay. about their rights, okay. until the laws begin to work, the, the institutions, begin to work without looking at people's faces, as you say in Nigeria. Mm-hmm. The institutions are strong enough to, to take care 
to take care of anyone, no matter the position, no matter the name, no matter the okay. amount of money the person okay. has, mm. we are not making any effect. You know, talking about um, the, the level of inequality and the, the level of, uh, uh, of power influence when it comes to handling issues of rape cases, uh, the, the current allegations by Joy Nanoi on um, uh, St. Augustine Lapabio has raised major concerns. And Joy Nanoi is an accomplished lawyer and lead counsel uh, for the Ogoni 19 and a former managing director of the NDDC. Uh, she was allegedly sexually harassed by a seven minister. Uh, I, I'm having a report that just uh, came in not quite long that Joy Nanoi's house in Port Harcourt invaded by armed police officers as early as 4 a.m. Um, Thursday morning, which is this morning. They blocked her from leaving her house in Port Harcourt home to appear before an Abuja panel uh, uh, in the House of Representatives and uh, the, the hashtag currently trending is nothing must happen to Joy. Uh, she's supposed to appear before the House of Rep panel uh, investigating the corruption, uh, ridicule, uh, ridiculing uh, the NDDC. Now when, when we look at the, the, the current disparity and the current level of um, inequality and gender uh, bias that exists in our political space. How do we begin to deal with such issues where certain individuals feel that they are untouchable? I think the first thing to say is the fact that nobody is really in charge of Nigeria. We have a president now. Where, where is the president in all of this? A serving minister comes out and openly shames a woman. An accomplished lawyer, one of the legal luminaries in the Niger Delta, like mm. you said, who was one of the counsels for the Ugoni Nine, and who has proved her metals, becoming the, the, the MD of the NDDC, the biggest interventionist agency in the Niger Delta. And you are reducing her to a prostitute. Mm. You are reducing her to um, her work as it concerns her marriage status. You are openly shaming her. And nobody has in government has called the minister to order. Nobody has called the minister to resign. Nobody has called the minister to apologize. Okay. The presidency that was gone short in the presidency from the, a few weeks ago. What has been done about it? We've not heard from the president. Hmm. Or in all of the Mago uh, controversy, removal and all of that, there's a lot of power play going on. <laughs> the president is nowhere to be found. Now, this woman has been publicly shamed. And why there's a lot of outrage that this is misogynism, this is not acceptable, the minister should resign, the minister should um, apologize. Okay. Now we are hearing that her house has been invaded. So it's about power play and the fact that nobody is calling anybody to order in Nigeria. Okay. That is just what it is. Hmm. Nobody is in charge of this country. So when people attain some level of power, some level of authority, they begin to resort to impunity. They begin to do whatever they like. They, like, the, Joy Nune has um, accused the minister of sexually, trying to sexually abuse her, or actually sexually abusing her. Okay. And, who knows how many other persons uh, this has happened to? And who knows how many more sexual violence, sexual abuse is going on in the corridors of power in Nigeria? Because they know that they cannot be called to order. They know that there will not be consequences. And so it speaks to the reality that there's really nobody in charge of this country. And now I always talk about um, about Sanjo. About Sanjo has his thoughts and all of that and all of that. Okay. But what we are happening, what we are seeing happening in Nigeria now, could never have happened under Abasanjo because he was someone that was really in charge. Hmm. Not but none of the political office holders can even could have contemplated doing it. I mean, at the level of contemplation, not actually going to do it. Hmm. But we're seeing a lot of impunity, a lot of abuse of office going hmm. on in Nigeria as we see. And, and people just know that, okay, if it ha this person does this and not, nothing happens, I can as well do my own. Recently, uh, Abita Dabiri, who is in charge of the um, diaspora uh, agency, yeah. came out to say she was driven out of her office space. Gun men were used against her, uh, armed men were used against her mm. by a serving minister. And as we see, nothing has happened to the man. Nobody has called him to question. Mm. So there is widespread impunity in government as we speak. And it, uh, it's, like I said earlier, it speaks to the fact that there's nobody that's really in charge that's calling these people to order. Mm. Nobody mm. is in charge. Nobody. And that's why, so when you talk about the, the, the joy in the case, the Fabio case, it's all part of the entire game plan. It's all part of the entire reality, the consequences. Mm. 
Mm. That this body is in charge. And so people are resorting to all kinds of impunity. And it's, not, it's not Joy Nunemi and um, uh, Abikeda are the two people who have spoken of. Okay. And I'm sure there are many more cases, many more atrocities going on. And people don't want to speak up because they just don't want to lose their power. These are just their seats. These are just a few people that break the odds and spoken at us because I believe they are very, very outspoken and yes. they are sick on their own. They can always walk out of power and okay. their head high. Hmm. And All right. so this is just what it is. Thank you. This is still the big question. We're looking at sexual harassment in high places. And uh, uh, Betty, our founder, C Hope uh, Women and Children's Rights Activist, is who I'm speaking with this morning on uh, the big question. The porosity of our security agency is, is something to be worried about, of how much um, the, those in political high places or those in high places are using um, the, the, the security that's supposed to protect the people against us. Yes, it's a very sad trend. And... Um it spells doom for the entire country that the law uh, enforcement agencies who are supposed to be independent okay. are now being used by politicians and powerful forces in the mm. country. That means we will be expecting a lot more impunity. Okay. That means that abuse will be on the rise because mm. it's a matter of buying them over. Okay. You know, what happened uh, sometime last year when um, GC Bank had an issue with um, the, the owner, uh, the uh, founder or really the owner of Innocent Motors. Now, now I, I'm sorry that I'm debating a little. You had a case, a bank has a case with an individual, a customer, and the customer sued you. The case was in court. And the next thing we saw that was, was that, and, or, or at the behest or the command of the duty bank, which is a major financial uh, uh, institution in the country, the police went in the dead of the night to arrest this man. This was your customer. This was a case you should have handled with extreme care. If you care about your PR, if you care about anything about your the future mm. of your institution. They went to arrest this man in the night, harassing the rest, supposed to be from ESCC. The man said the bank took his money. And the next thing, he was being investigated, arrested, and harassed by um, an anti-fraud agency. Mm. And his wife was beaten up. This was clearly at the behest of GC Bank. I'm, I'm, I'm a GC Bank customer. That this is unacceptable. Hmm. At the end of the day, GC Bank is a loser for it. This right. was only supposed to have happened because this was a case in court. And so you clearly you see what's happening, the breaking news we're having now. This woman is being held hostage in her own home because from, she has acu openly accused a serving minister, a very powerful political force, of sexual harassment, mm. of all kinds of um, harassment. And the man has been publicly shamed for making very reckless uh, comments about her marital status and all mm. of that, for being family so mystic, gender uh, insensitive. And uh, how do I even put it? So, uh, sounding sexist. And now he's using the, 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 the law enforcement against her. This is just what it is. There's still a lot of questions to ask on, on uh, who sent this off, who sent these soldiers to our house, uh, uh, what is the current situation, what is all this about, which the fact that she's supposed to appear before the House of Reps today. Yeah, this means the law enforcement agents are lawyer, not to the institutions that we have, not to the rule of law, but they are lawyer to certain individuals. Hmm. There was no in the House of Reps, which is a major lawmaking body in the country. Okay. Uh, at a house of parliament, who summon someone and he, he's supposed to be on the way to Abuja, and she's in her hostage, it's like a counter order. She's in her hostage in her home. It, it, it's a shame on us, and it's an indication that the law enforcement, the police in particular, is loyal to individuals, and it's unacceptable. I think uh, Nigerians should rise against it. Nigerians should raise an outcry okay. against this abuse of power. So the current situation of what we are being faced with regards to sexual harassment in high places, and, and you know, the, the ones that we can actually identify is because, you know, these people are public office holders. We have people who are CEOs, who are, you know, executives in certain organizations who are taking advantage of the, of the position that they find themselves. And um, on the aspect of of coming together as organizations and bodies uh, to be able to uh, deal with certain issues. How, what can um, NGOs and bodies do right now to be able to solve the current situation and problem we are facing? Yeah, thank you so much. Um, I'm really happy, like I said earlier, that people are opening up more than ever before. 
Mm-hmm. And most times there are people that are uh, like, um, maybe they are prominent, they are very much aware. And we are hoping that more and more people will open up. But then, like I also pointed out, one of the uh, um, the, the factors that may want to, that will um, lead people to keep quiet is this culture of uh, silence, the culture of stigma, and um, victim blaming. Okay. There's so many, many young women, even women in their mid ages and all of that, who have been sexually har- harassed by their bosses, who have been actually raped by their bosses, by their superiors and okay. people that have some kind of power over them in the past. And they're keeping quiet because probably they've moved on, they're married, and they don't want any stigmatization. Then some of them know that once they open up, that that's the end of your marriage because the stigma will just be too much. In, in places like U.S., they're very liberal, you know, people are very much enlightened. You see people coming up. You saw a woman that came up sometime um, in the last year and okay. said that uh, Trump, no, not Trump, the, the, uh, the, the high cost. Um, a Supreme Court judge, yes, that yeah. was uh, nominated by Trump. She came up and said he raped her during the party during the high school uh, year. Mm. And that, that, that was a married woman. And nobody thought about the fact that, okay, she's married and her husband is going to divorce her because uh, she's been raped as a teenager and all of that. Mm. Because there's a lot of enlightenment. So we need that kind of enlightenment here that people will speak up and hope and they will not be the ones that will be shamed that they are rapists, they are abusers. So also when you talk about the need for for um, CSOs working on um, sexual violence to be united, I, I really agree with you that we need more solidarity. There's been a lot of solidarity um, in the recent past. I think we are doing better than ever before, and we can only uh, keep it up. We saw the case of the uh, the Me Too movement, the case of the... this. Uh, Okay. peaceful church or something when you mm. have the factory you go case and all of that so many ngos were involved okay. in ensuring that they, they, they create a ground swell of mm. a ground swell of um, publicity uh for this to be addressed and then you've seen the case of the bunch who was um, a musician who was recently abused Okay. So many NGOs have come together to give support to this woman who was abused, who has, who was reportedly abused, who has accused the superstar of uh, surgery abusing her in 2018. And also, you saw the power play that came, the, that came up as a result okay. of that. Mm. To show you how powerful, influential individuals try to oppress the people who come up to abuse, accuse them. Mm. This lady, uh, she so accused uh, the band. And at the end of the day, rather than the uh, the musician being arrested, being called for questioning, it was the lady that was arrested, mm. and she was detained for about, uh, about almost 20, 20, almost twenty four hours. Also, I saw the bandit um, manager who, who who put up a write up recently to say to say he 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 was a manager when this thing happened, and he actually confirmed that something like that happened. Mm-hmm. And then he made a very silent comment. He said. He, more than every other person, he's the one that has been harassed, his family has been harassed, he's been called for questioning, he's gone through all kinds of intimidation. Mm. He said he, who was the manager, and not the accused. Okay. I, saw, I clearly saw that statement. So we have to, as a country, come to uh, uh, a, a, a stage where yeah. when people are accused, whether they are, the, the accusers are prominent or not, those people are brought to book. Those people are questioned. Those people go through the the, the, yeah. the, the normal process okay. of interrogation, of prosecution, of okay. investigation, Thank you. and not the other way around. Mm. I, don't, I think one of the callers also mentioned the case of Koji. Uh, it was yeah. the same intimidation. Someone yeah. came up and then uh, accused the. Uh, she accused. She originally uh, initially accused the commissioner of abandoning his family. And what did you see? The commissioner got her arrested, detained at his residence, stripped naked and videoed and and, 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 and actually had physically abused. And then she also accused the commissioner of sexually abusing her. And this same commissioner was also said to have actually abused one other person. But what did we see? At the end of the day, the latest post we saw on the Facebook uh, on, on girl Facebook was praising the commissioner and celebrating his birthday. So a lot of fireworks, a lot of power play has obviously uh, 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 gone 
on behind the scenes. We, we have to. Uh, thank you so much, Betty, uh, for for all that you have said this morning. But we are going to have to bring this conversation to a wrap uh, quickly right now. Um, with regards to what has played out with um, the current case of uh, Joy Denoy and uh, Senator Gosnap Babi, which is currently even playing as we are speaking, uh, what would be your expectations concerning proper investigation on the allegation uh, with regards to justice and transparency? I think now that the institutions have failed us, I mean, it appears that we do not have anyone in charge of this country, mm. that the rest of the society should rise up in solidarity with this woman and ensure that the right thing is done. Okay. The minister has been accused. He should be investigated. The, the accuser should not be the one that should be intimidated. Should not be the, at the receiving end of the brutality, the impunity of law enforcement agents, mm. especially the police or soldiers or whoever. So the, the Nigeria, oh, every Nigerian should rise up in support of this woman because it could have been any other person. Uh, it may be happening to Joy today. It could be me tomorrow. It could be any of us. Okay. And so let's stand up and ensure that the rule of law prevails in this situation. Let uh, Senator Fabio be investigated. Let the matter be properly prosecuted by the police. And let the police not bring itself to public shame by uh, uh, appearing to be in favor of accuser, uh, the accused, simply because he's in power. And then we should also look at this particular area. In all of this, the Niger Delta people are the ones uh, uh, that, 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 uh, the, that are the ones at the receiving end of all of this. They are the ones. Okay. That's where they report that in 20 years, over 4 billion Naira has gone to the Niger Delta. Hmm. For the, sorry, over 4 trillion Naira has gone to the Niger Delta for development of the region under the NDDC, which is an interven interventionist agency. Yes. And I happen to have been the Niger Delta, and there's nothing on ground in the Niger Delta to show that even one, one trillion has been expended for the social the economic and infrastructural growth of that region. The Niger Delta still remains the, one of the most polluted sites on Earth. The Niger Delta still remains the, 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 the symbol of the, of the resource cost. Okay. And so we have to look beyond, after all of this, after all has been resolved, we have to look at accountability in mm. terms of the expenditure on the growth of the Niger Delta. Right. And look and uh, ensure that this does not happen anymore, that there is accountability and that the people of the region who are laying the golden egg do not continue in this desperate poverty. Thank you, is, thank uh, you very much, Betty. Uh, I want to say a big thank you for joining us this morning to weigh in on this particular conversation of sexual harassment in high places. Do have a lovely day. Thank you so much, my All pleasure. right. WFM 91.7.